So these are the elements. This is everything that you see, feel and breathe on Earth and into the furthest reaches of the solar system and beyond into the universe. These elements here. And we know of 118 elements so far that have been discovered. But only about 90 of those actually occur naturally. And all the ones beyond about 92 have been created artificially in laboratories and power stations. And when you look at them, you think they all look a bit similar. Most of them are silver or grey metals, and a few of them are colourless gases. There's not really that much variety, but when you look around you in the world, you find that the world is a very, very colourful place and it's made of lots and lots of different things. And that is because these elements don't occur on their own most of the time. They combine with other elements to produce what's called compounds, and that's what makes the huge diversity of things living and non-living on Earth. So the elements, it's not just about chemistry, it also embraces physics and technology and medicine and geology and biology and all these different subjects. All of those ultimately derive a lot of their information from, from the elements and from the, 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 the periodic table. But also, it's, it's not just about scientists, it's, it's relevant to everybody because everybody is made of elements and all the things around them are made of elements. So the periodic table of the elements is not just a random arrangement of these elements, there's a very definite pattern to it. So the columns and the rows within there are telling us a huge amount about the structure of the atoms and the number of electrons in each of these atoms and how they interact with other elements. So once you actually get to know the periodic table, you can actually almost read it like a book. There's so much information in there. And each element, even though they look quite similar, each has its own unique properties. It's, it's density, melting point, hardness, colour, and things like that. So every element is unique. Every element has its uses, but some, as we'll see, are more useful than others. So something you might think about is, well, where did, where did the elements come from in the first place? Well, they, they weren't all made at the same time. In fact, two elements, hydrogen and helium, are 99% of all of the atoms in the universe are those two elements. And they were created in the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. So all of the hydrogen atoms in your body are 13.7 billion years old, which is worth remembering. And all the other elements have actually been made in various places in the universe subsequently. So carbon and oxygen and nitrogen have been made in stars like the sun. Iron is made in stars like supernovae, exploding stars. And things like gold, which everybody loves of course, probably made in colliding neutron stars. So they've been formed at different times in the sort of furnaces these, uh, of the stars. Geologists, the people that study the, the Earth's crust and the rocks that it's made of, have discovered about three and a half thousand different minerals. And you think, wow, there's 90 elements to make them from, so why not? But when you actually look at those minerals, you find that nearly all of them are actually just made of various combinations of a few common elements. So in the Earth's crust, more than 80% of, of the rock material is actually made of just two elements, silicon and oxygen. And not many more beyond that. There's aluminium, magnesium, iron, and they account for nearly all of the minerals. And they're all combined in lots and lots of different ways, which is why you get lots of different minerals. It's a bit like cooking. If you just have a little bit more of this, and a little bit less of that, and you cook it at a slightly different temperature, you get something completely different. Making minerals is just the same. And so a lot of these elements, the more exotic ones, the prasiodymium or the holmium or the indium, that a lot of people won't have heard of, they hardly get a look in when it comes to minerals in the Earth's crust. They're, they're very rare, very, very few minerals. And that's actually a big problem when it comes to some elements like indium. And you might think, what use is indium? If you've got a touch screen on your phone, that's indium tin oxide. And there are no ore minerals of indium. Nearly all of the minerals, in fact, are silicates. So if anybody ever asks you, shows you a mineral, says, what do you think that is? You can just say, 
I think that's a silicate. And most of the time, you'll be right. These are carbonates. That's another really, really important group of rocks is carbonates. You might think carb calcium carbonate, what's that? That's limestone. And a, a lot of Ireland is, is underlain by limestone as a bedrock. So it's, it's a compound where you've got carbon and oxygen combined with other elements. In the case of limestone, it's combined with calcium, but sometimes it might be combined with uh, magnesium for dolomite or manganese for rhodochrosite. There's lots and lots of different um, compounds, carbonate compounds. Another really important group of minerals that uh, people might not be familiar with but are incredibly important for everybody are what's called sulfides. It's where you've got a metal combined with sulfur which is another very very common element and so you might get lead sulfide or zinc sulfide and these are incredibly important ore deposits. So Ireland has the biggest uh, lead zinc sulfide ore deposit in Europe down at uh, Navan in County Meath.